some different Supreme Court cases that are going to come out during this time, and most of these are going to cite the 14th Amendment, which gives equal protection under the law. So the first one we're going to look at is Mendez versus Winchester. The first one we're going to look at is Mendez versus Westminster, and this is from California, and it's going to have to do with segregation of Mexican-American children in schools. And so this one said that segregation was illegal without a special state law requiring it. So it's not quite there with desegregation, but it's at least saying you can't do it without a law requiring it. Our next one is in Texas, Delgado versus Bastrop. And this one is going to kind of be, it's going to be based on that Mendez versus Westminster case. And this is in Texas, and they decide that Segregation of Mexican-American children was illegal, so they sued Bastrop ISD, claiming that the children, um, that the Mexican-American children were being segregated from other children of the same race without a law, so that was in violation, and the court agreed and ordered that the school district stop segregating Mexican-American children. A civil, more of a criminal case or rights from, uh, that have to do with, you know, your rights of the accused is Hernandez versus Texas. This was, Hernandez was convicted of murder, but he was convicted of murder by an all-white jury. So they appealed the ruling, and they uh, said that, the, um, that he was claiming equal protection under the law, the 14th Amendment. Texas argued that Mexican-Americans were white, and so they weren't entitled to any special protection, and that he was represented in the jury. The Supreme Court ruled that Mexican-Americans formed a separate class, and they were entitled to protection. So Hernandez had the right to be tried for a trial by jury of his, of his actual peers. So this one was based on trial by jury, a fair trial by jury. So this was a big landmark case for Hispanic rights. Next one, right, white versus register. This one is going to have to do with elections and districts. And there were some things with the Dallas and Bayhar counties where um, they had done some things with the election bound with the boundaries for different members of their um, district that kept from certain minority groups of having representation. So this required them to have single member districts that would help ensure that these minorities would have representation. Next one is uh, Wisconsin versus, Yo versus Yoder, and this one is going to actually be citing the First Amendment and citing freedom of religion, because in the Amish faith, they require uh, children usually sometimes would stop school after eighth grade to go and help on the, on the farm and at home, and Wisconsin required the Amish children to attend school, and this was struck down by the Supreme Court saying it violated their freedom of religion. And Edgewood ISD versus Kirby. This one is also going to be in Texas, and this is one that still affects a lot of you today. This is a um, court case about school financing where they saw that it was based off of property taxes. So if you lived in a property poor district, you didn't get a lot of funding, but if you lived in a rich, fancy school district area with lots of property taxes, then you had lots of funding. So this was kind of inadequate funding for schools. So this is kind of lead to this idea of the Robin Hood concept where you have some of the richer school districts that are sending off money to the poorer school districts so that they have adequate funding. Other legislation, this is going into the 1970s to kind of help with in this climate of change. The Environmental Protection Agency is going to set some standards for about air and water pollution and having to get certain studies that you have to get approved before starting construction and um, it allows private citizens to sue polluters under this um, agency or this act. Um, another act is going to be the Endangered Species Act, and this is going to take steps to protect plants and animals that are in danger of extinction. And the Community Reinvesting Act of 1977, this is going to be passed under Carter's presidency. It's going to require banks to make uh, credit available. It's going to, the goal is to prevent decay in those low-income neighborhoods and inner cities. So how will this time period be assessed? Let's look at a question with a visual. So our question says this 1972 poster depicts an organization originally formed to advocate blank. So it's an organization and what are they advocating for? Why are they doing, why are they advocating? So let's look at our picture. Let's look at what we see. We see si se puede, it can be done. So we see 
Spanish. We see fields, and we see it says boycott red coach lettuce. So this looks like pictures of lettuce, and they're picking lettuce. And again, I know from class, we talked about where, oh, I forgot to look at my source, 1972 Chicago Women's Graphics Collective, just in case that would help me out. And we know that during this time that there were uh, protests in, for migrant workers, rights for migrant workers. Okay, so maybe they're advocating for rights for migrant workers. Okay, so let's look at our answer choices. A, publicly funded health care for children. Well, we see nothing in the picture that has to do with health care. We see children, but nothing about health care for children. Better economic treatment of migrant workers. Well, we know from looking at this picture that those are most likely migrant workers, so let's keep that one in mind. A retirement system for farm laborers. Now, we see a farm, and we see farm laborers, but they, aren't, they don't boycott certain foods because of a retirement system. D, equal employment opportunities for women. Well, in this picture, we see men and women. Maybe if there was all women in the picture, we might think twice. So this one's incorrect. Our correct answer is going to be B. All right, this time we have a graphic. The name of which civil rights leader best completes the title of the graphic? So we're looking for the civil rights leader. So it's political views of, and we're trying to find the answer for the question point. So this person supported civil disobedience, that's the breaking a law to prove a point, nonviolent resistance, and desegregation. He opposed expressions of violence, political compromises, and racial separatism. So let's look at our answer choices. So first of all, do we see anybody in our answer choices that we haven't talked about in the class? I see one. I hope you see it. And that's Stokely Carmichael. We're going to cross that one out because we have not talked about that with the civil rights movement. Do we see anybody that did not support nonviolent resistance? I see one. I hope you see it too. And that's going to be Malcolm X. So now we're down to Booker T. Washington and Martin Luther King Jr. Um, if you remember, Booker T. Washington is going to be in the early 1900s. He is not going to be a major civil rights leader that's going out and talking and talking about using civil disobedience and nonviolent resistance. But we do know that Martin Luther King did support these three things. So the correct answer is G, Martin Luther King Jr. 